to the left are things that we really measure uh, our business. This is this is how you win, right? These these are the points that these are the points, the winning points: sales, revenue, margin, market share, satisfaction, retention rate. But what are the under the hood items that you know we have talked about so much, so far? You know, obviously, lead volume, lead conversion rate, cost per unique prospect, sales team response time, close rate, return, advertising spend, right? So those are kind of things that in the digital world, when you think about not only brand, but converting it from a brand to something tangential in terms of a sale, are the things you've got to track so you can actually maximize your left side, right? I talked a lot about this stuff. I had actually, thank God you guys should thank her, I had given her 100 pages. She cut it down to 10. Um, but it's always about crawl, walk, and run. Um, and so one of the things that I will uh, leave you with here is, is this concept of marketing automation. So a lot of your dealerships probably have some kind of a CRM, you're, if you're an OEM or, or whatever organization you have. But the next kind of things you'll start hearing is this marketing automation. There is nothing, you know, it's hard to keep track of everything I've talked about, all the content, the channels, and how do you market it to, you know, thousands and thousands of your customers. So that's something that uh, is new technology that uh, that is coming out uh, more and more being used in our industries. So with that, what I will do is I will hand it over to John, who's actually going to give you a specific example of, I think, exciting content um, um, that you know John, John will talk about here as the from Spincar. Thank you, Matt. Hi everyone, my name is John Paz with Spincar. Um, just to give you a brief background on uh, myself, I've been in the digital marketing space for about 23 years. Uh, worked for Audi and Volkswagen of America, Autotrader.com, BlackBook, all on really the, the retail side of the business. Um, and, uh, and then he um, met me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is kind of exciting. The work truck space is, uh, is new uh, to us. Um, I met, you know, it's interesting. I, I, as I mentioned, I've been doing this. I've done dealer training for uh, our OEM networks uh, when I was at Audi. And 23 years later, Unfortunately, the technology has changed a lot. Unfortunately, the consumer experience has not evolved at the same pace. Um, it's still, uh, consumers are, you know, we, we saw even back in 2004, 2005, uh, the dealers that were really cutting edge were responding to leads within 15 minutes. By just doing the educational part of it, they were getting at a higher attachment rate at the actual F&I step. And so what we've done is, you know, tried to kind of continue that here in the, uh, the U.S. Um, this is just from Cox. 63% of them said that, you know, they would be more, uh, they would buy more if they could learn about it, again, before the process. Um, this is one that uh, we, uh, we did ourselves on a group of our uh, shoppers. 89% of them said they'd be more interested in speaking to an F9 manager after they learned more. Um, this is actually a client that was using the product. They were one of our first ones. They saw an actual 19% increase in penetration of F&I products. I don't know if it's exactly the same in work truck space, but in the retail space, F&I accounts for about 53% of a dealer's revenue, and over the next several years, it's uh, supposed to go higher. This is a little bit farther advanced, but one of the things is when you have those shoppers at your site, there's a good chance that they might leave, they've, they've either they've got things going on, they're gonna go out and shop your competition, um, so one of the things we do is we actually, for our clients, we'll take their 360 inventory and we'll retarget them. So just a brief 101 on retargeting. If you've ever gone to Amazon or any other shopping site, you look at something and for the next three weeks, you're going to see it in every single ad unit that you, uh, you're going to see it in your inbox, you're going to see it in other, uh, other sites that you go to. So same thing. In our case, what we do is we, in this, I would tell you, we, lots of retargeting solutions in the market. Make sure that if you are going to retarget your shoppers that come to your site, make sure that you tell them you want to really streamline the audience that is going to be retargeted. You do not want to retarget people who came to your site and bounced after five seconds. You want people who were on your site, spent time, looked at a lot of your inventory, spent time looking if it's uplift, uh, upfitting uh, configurations, whatever it might be, you want to kind of whittle down that audience to make sure that you're, you're going to go after the people who definitely showed a high propensity to buy. And then what you want to do is you want to create engaging ads to go out and stay top of mind because they're going to be seeing messages from your competitors. People can do like-minded audiences, which they can find people that say, hey, 
John and Amit are both in the commercial space. We happen to know a little bit about John. We're going to go find people. And in that case, maybe Amit gets pulled into it just because he happens to show some of the same characteristics. The technology on this is incredibly uh, sophisticated. Um, you can get down to a zip code uh, level, so you can figure out from your, you can keep your spend very reasonable and keep it within your market. If you want to conquest outside your market, it's a great opportunity. But the idea being is also when you're retargeting, you need to create very visually appealing ads because I don't know how many tens of thousands of ads we probably see in the course of a day, but you've got to do something to kind of separate yourself from the rest of the advertisement because we're kind of ad, ad blind is what they call it, which is we see so much advertising that it really takes something to jump out at us to catch our attention. In our case, it took us about 18 months. We were able to actually implement the 360 into the ad unit. Um, depending on what information that the shopper looked at, we can also pull in. So if they looked at specific features on a vehicle, we can actually show those in the ad unit. We do about 990 variations of the ad unit between color, size, layout. Um, but for us, we found that our dealers are finding that this is a really good way to get those shoppers back. And we do find that when they come back to the site, there's a very high level of engagement. Um, so that's one kind of, and again, it's an it's a area where you can test. Um, I would do A-B testing. Uh, again, if you're working with an agency or if you're working with a company that offers retargeting, all of those kind of questions should be something that you can ask and get responses for so that you can know that you're getting a good ROI on your investment. When you're, if you are looking at doing retargeting to kind of keep in front of your, those people that are engaging with your brand, just try and stay very, uh, create interactive ads, make sure that you're providing a lot of content, trying to make it very relevant. So in our case, almost all of the content in the ad is something that the shopper actually engaged with at one point. Take some time and really, really spend time on your brand, your reputation, and your experience from a consumer standpoint. I think you'll be very surprised. Hopefully you'll be pleased, but at the time, be, be very harsh with yourself. If you don't like it, your shoppers don't like it.